You know, brothers and sisters, when you take the time and you read the four Gospels and you see every single time the Lord told them not to be afraid, to let their heart not be troubled, stop being afraid. You ever wonder how he said that? Was he always soft and gentle? Did he always approach his disciples like, it is I, please do not be afraid. Or do you think there were times when he spoke boldly to them? Stop being afraid. You know, the Lord is so good. And what's very interesting is that 365 times the Lord said, do not be afraid. Let your heart not be troubled. Along the lines of telling them to stop fearing. I want you to think about that for a moment. That means the Lord strategically made it to be that every single day of the year, he has a do not be afraid waiting for you. Brothers and sisters, I had to do this video because it was troubling in my spirit that many of you are afraid of creation rather than the creator. And it's very mature of us in this ministry to make sure, to make sure that we are balanced. What do I mean by that? Well, the word of God talks about a good balance. If we're going to give you documentaries exposing the end days agenda when it comes to the dragon, we want to balance that out by giving you messages that cause you to focus only on Jesus Christ. The word of God says, Whatsoever things are pure and whatsoever things are true and whatsoever things are just and it names off a list and it says think on these things. You understand? We cannot be ignorant of the devil's devices. The word of God exposes Satan and we're commanded to expose the darkness of Satan's kingdom. But we can't let it consume us. To where it starts giving us anxiety. There's a lot of you that truly needed this message. And I thank the Lord that I heard his voice. So what I have decided to do is I want you and I to have a conversation. But then when I'm done, I'm going to play a message. It's less than an hour long. And it is one of the most powerful revelations that the Most High God has ever given this ministry and we're going to focus on fear. Remember that if you fear the heavenly creator, you will not fear the creation. But if you fear creation, you will not fear the heavenly creator. And this doesn't mean there's not going to be wars within your members at times. This doesn't mean that sudden things may happen and you feel afraid, but it's will you cast it down when it rises against you? Will you resist that fear and say, I will not be afraid of what man can do to me. I will not be afraid of the devil. I will not be afraid of creation because everything is included in the department in the category of creation. Think about it. Whether it's the devil himself, whether it's a disease, whether it's natural disasters, whatever the enemy likes to use to cause you to panic and have anxiety. And that very word panic is stemmed from the false God pan. So brothers and sisters, when you fear the most high God, the heavenly creator, what happens is you start to trust him in the midst of things that happen in creation. You see what I'm saying? So we were concerned for a lot of you because the reality is the truth is terrifying. 
Now, there might be some of you that go, man of God, what do you mean by that? Like, can I handle the truth? The truth is terrifying. Well, who does the Bible say? Who does the word of God say is truth? Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua the Almighty, is the way, the truth, and the life. So he is truth itself and trust and believe that Paul said, knowing the terror of God, I warn men. What do you think happened to John in the book of Revelation when the Son of God appeared to him as the Almighty? He fell as a dead man. Why? Because the truth is terrifying. But I got good news about this truth. Amen. But before we get there, I, I want to save that to the end if you don't mind. I wanted to give you words of comfort. Don't be afraid. Remember, 365 times. Do not be afraid. Let your heart not be troubled. Fear not. The Lord is so good. He made sure he reserved a do not be afraid for every day of the year for the rest of your life because he loves you and he doesn't want to lose you. I want us to talk about just a few scriptures and then we're going to get right into this message that was preached some years back. Now the quality might not be as good, the audio is not as clean, but the anointing is very strong. Amen. And all glory to Christ. So I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. I want you to see what it says. It says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Did you hear that? The three words we really want to break down here is power, love, and a sound mind. But... For the sake of time, let's focus on love and sound mind. Okay, you look up power on your own time. So that word there for fear is dalia, is I believe how you pronounce it in the Greek. And this literally means fearfulness or cowardice. Okay, that's a whole nother level of fear. All right. And God didn't give you that. He didn't give you that spirit of fear to be a coward. This is not talking about the fear of the Lord. Okay. Now I'm just going to let you know right now. If Pastor Cupcakes taught you wrong while you was growing up in the church. And he told you we're not to be afraid of God. He was lying to you. Okay. Uh, the reality is the fear of the Lord is all through the Old and the New Testament. I'm not going to get into that. I just want you to watch this message and a lot of those questions will be answered by the grace of God. Just wanted to establish that, that Pastor Cupcakes was lying to you. Okay, so it is good to fear God. All right. But let's talk about that word love. Right. Because God didn't give us the spirit of cowardice, fearfulness, but of power, love and a sound mind. That word love is agape. There's different levels to love. Did you know that? You have eros love. That's where you get the word erotic. You have filial love. That's human love. But agape love can only be given by the Lord God Almighty. And if you go into the scriptures, you find out that John said, God is love. That's, see, brothers and sisters, that's literal. He is literally love itself, the same way he's truth itself. So whenever you hear me say the truth is terrifying, I really mean it. Now, there's levels to that. For those that are not right with God, the truth about what is going on around them is terrifying. But if they get a hold of this agape love, see, agape love is a person. <laughs> he's alive. And when they hold on to him, 
They will have the peace of God that passes all understanding. They will be like a bird flying in the eye of a hurricane. Everything is crazy all around them, but yet they're in the peace of God because they have that perfect love that cast away all fear. Are you following? But that word for sound mind in the Greek means self-control. But what I want to do is go to the root of the word. That word in the Greek is sophronizdo. It literally means to restore to one's senses. Now remember, the dragon has been studying the human mind since the Garden of Eden, brothers and sisters. He has had a long time to study the anatomy of the children of God, of every person that is born on this earth, man, woman, and child. He's been studying how our bodies are made. What connects us? How does our mind work? What levels are there to our brain? What is our soul? What's our nervous system? What's our skeletal structure? You don't think that the dragon, <laughs> you remember in school, this is crazy. You remember in school, I know, I gotta get you to the video, but we need to have this conversation and you need to put a smile on your face if you know the Lord loves you and you're following him, amen. You remember in high school, middle school, whatever, there was a time where in science class, they would legit put a stank dead frog in front of us. And many of us had to dissect that frog and look into the frog. Okay, this is the heart, this is this, this is that, right? I know some of y'all like, hmm, I wonder why a frog? What? Is that about the book of Revelation where they're like frogs that come out of the mouth of the dragon? And let's not go there. Stay focused. Some of y'all be going too deep. <laughs> now let's go. You ready? The dragon has been dissecting people, what some would call human beings, mankind. Dissecting them like a frog, studying them, figuring out how this human computer that God made, this organic computer, this amazing creation, fearfully and wonderfully made. You don't think the dragon is interested on what makes you move, on how your brain operates, how he can try to take over that body, how he could try to take over the bodies of mankind take over their mind, understand how to induce fear into them because he knew, ah, see, I told you we was going somewhere. He knew that fear causes a chaos with the senses and a person ain't able to think clearly. How many of y'all have ever been pulled over? Whether it's a broken brake light or some of y'all were speeding. Whether you roll through a stop sign or whatever the case be, at some point in the world, or even maybe when you were saved, something happened and you got pulled over. When those lights were flashing and that loud noise was going on, how did you feel? Was your heart pumping fast? Now for some of y'all, you was high on weed or something in the world, or you was up to no good, or whether you was born again. There was still that anxiety that you had to fight, yes or no, for the most part. As you grow, you learn not to be afraid. And as soon as that anxiety tries to get you, you cast it down. The Bible says to cast down imaginations, amen, that try to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Wow. But that noise and that flashing lights and the light shining on your car and you just holding the steering wheel like, yes, officer, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But your heart was pounding, right? At least for most of you. It's designed that way to cause a person to not be able to think properly in their senses. 
it gives an advantage over the police officer when questioning the person they're pulling over. Because when somebody's mind is not sound and focused, they're more easy. You know what? We don't have to go there, do we? So my point is this. The devil wants chaos within your mind and in your soul. And ultimately your very being. And make no mistake about it. Fear is one of the most powerful weapons he uses against mankind. Followed by doubt. Okay? Make no mistake about it. Fear causes the body to vibrate in a, cha in a chaotic way. That's why the root word of sound mind means to restore to one's senses. Are you following? So think about this logically. The more of Christ you receive, the more you seek him, the more you read his word, the more you pray, the more of that perfect love you will have on the inside of you. And when that fear knocks on the door, it says, I'm fear. I want you to be afraid of the Antichrist. I want you to be afraid of the Great Reset New World Order. I want you to be afraid of disease. I want you to be afraid of dying. I want you to be afraid. If you got Jesus Christ on the inside, if you got the perfect love on the inside, he'll answer the door. <laughs> yes, that's what, I'm <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Perfect love will answer the door when fear comes knocking. And you know what he's going to say? You picked the wrong house to ring the doorbell. You picked the wrong house to knock on. Because this is my temple. My child will not be afraid of you, devil. My child will not be afraid of persecution. My child will not be afraid of natural disasters. My child will not be afraid of creation. Because the creator is living on the inside. Come on now, talk to me. The next scripture I want us to talk about is 1 John chapter 4. Will you go there? Verse 18. I'll be right up to it. Wow, look at that. I don't know, you might not be able to see that. If you open up to any scriptures while we have fellowships, make sure you put it in the comment section. Amen. That's, that's not a light thing, brothers and sisters. I don't know if you understand the probability of, of turning right to the chapter and verse of what we're talking about. It's, it's a very, very beautiful sign. But I, I want you to see this now. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear, because fear hath torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Are you hearing this? So now we're starting to see the agenda of the dragon. If he can cause you to fear and be afraid, you won't perfect that love. Ooh. He don't want you to get that perfect love. He don't want you to walk in the perfection of love. So he constantly tries to bombard you with different levels of fear, whether it's the fear of man, the fear of dying, the fear of this, the fear of that. To stop, to stop the growing process of perfection when it comes to love. But you're not going to allow that, amen? You're going to put your foot down, amen? You're going to draw closer to perfect love, amen? Because the more you draw closer to perfect love, the further fear is pushed back. That don't mean it won't come around. But it won't have the power over you. It won't have the grip. Let's use a very simple analogy. Let's say you're in a house. The windows are locked. The door is locked. And there's a pit bull running loose in the neighborhood. You may be a little concerned looking out the window saying, man, that pit bull look like it's crazy. Look like it's going to bite somebody. Now, if any of y'all own a pit bull, I'm not discriminating, but... They do have a track record of being raised by the wrong people, if you know what I mean. But hypothetically speaking, you wouldn't really be afraid. Because why? You're in your house. The door's locked. The windows are shut. 
And that pit bull can't chew his way through the wall. You have to have that type of understanding. I can see the things going all, over, all around me in the world. But I am secure in Christ. So even if that fear tries to come up to my porch like a ravenous pit bull, it really don't move me. See, Paul said, none of these things move me. Are you following? You would just look out your peephole and be like, you dumb dog. What are you doing? Where's your, where's your owner? Because you in the wrong yard. You ain't supposed to be on this property. That's how you will be. By God's grace, when you are secure in Christ and you're growing with him, you're growing in him and he's growing in your house, in your body, in your temple. When fear comes knocking, the son of God will go to the door. Ooh, that's so good. But hold on a minute. We got to talk about a certain word. It says fear hath torment. Remember that word is agape, right? When it comes, remember the word love means agape. That's the very love of God, the living love, the, the person called love. That's a good way to put it. But what does that mean that fear has torment? Well, first off, that word, that word fear there is phobos. It, it means dread or terror to cause to alarm or fright. Did you hear that? But remember... Perfect love cast away all fear. He says, but what we're focusing on is that word torment, that fear has torment. That word there is colossus. It means punishment. But wait a minute, pause. What I want us to do is talk about this. This is absolutely outstanding. One of the most powerful revelations that the Most High has ever given me. When I read this scripture one day and I was meditating on the word of the Lord. Some of y'all need to humble yourself and stop acting like you know everything. You know, you can't even say the word meditate without somebody having something to say about it. Meditation don't belong with the new age. The word meditate is in the Bible, brothers and sisters. Stop learning from these fake YouTubers that give you milk motivational speeches pretending to have deep understanding of the scriptures when they really don't. They're just glorified motivational speakers. All they do is tell you Jesus loves you, but they don't want to they don't want to take the time themselves to sacrifice by prayer and fasting and seeking the face of God to actually give you revelation, to actually show you who he is. They just scratch the surface. Well, the Lord loves you and I love you and amen. Little 20 minute messages. You got to be careful. Why are you stuck on milk when you're supposed to move on to meat, brothers and sisters? There is a time for milk. Sincere milk. Okay. But at some point you need to desire true teachings from the most high God. That actual ordained and anointed servants of God will teach you sound doctrine and humility. You see, just because I'm being bold doesn't make me prideful because I know God has blessed me to bless you. There's nothing wrong with that. Would you say Jordan is being prideful if he's confident in his jump shot or his slam dunk? If, if, that's a, if that's been put into him, the best thing he could do is do that the best he can. So if God has allowed me by his, only by his mercy and grace, I'm not worthy if it, ain't, if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ, I would be eternally unworthy to even speak to you. But because of his blood, brothers and sisters, he has allowed me and called me forth to be a teacher in this last hour, a messenger to warn as many as possible. All I ask you to do is pray for us. Pray for us and stand by our side in this fight. Be careful who you learn from that are keeping you in a diaper. They're keeping you crawling. They're keeping you on milk because they themselves are on milk. And then they want to fight against those 
who want to go deep into the scriptures. And because of jealousy and envy, they want to do this. And they'll try to mock people of God that speak to you revelations and understanding mysteries of the word. Make no mistake about it, brothers and sisters. No servant is greater than their master. If the Pharisees were envious and jealous of Jesus Christ, there, there are going to be those that are envious and jealous of the servants of God. And it's our job and it's, uh, it's for us to pray for them before it's too late, brothers and sisters. But the reality is we have to dissect this. We have to go into the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, let's look at it through the eyes of a husband and a wife. Whether you're married or not, you can understand this. What makes a marriage strong? Is it when the husband and wife only scratch the surface of knowing each other? Or is it when they want to know everything about each other? They want to know what makes them laugh. They want to know what moves them with passion. They want to know their favorite color to their favorite meal. They want to know what their hobbies are. They want to know everything about their spouse. Because the more you know your spouse, and the, more your, and the more your spouse knows you, the stronger your bond. This is why I had to emphasize on false teachers trying to mock you when you would prefer to learn from this ministry and other ministries that want to give you the revelation of Christ to show you in depth who he is. Because my calling because one of the things that God expects from me and those in the ministry with us is that we present you to Christ huh, as a chaste virgin, knowing as much about your husband as possible. Because the more you know about Christ, the more you'll be willing to sacrifice for him, even die for him, be faithful to him. Are you following? So do not let these crafty people with smooth words try to undermine you and discourage you because you're tired of being on pastor's nipple. Tell the pastor, get your nipple out of my mouth. You're lazy. You don't want to see Christ. You don't want to know the depths of the son of God. And you're trying to keep me stagnant with you. Remember what Jesus said about the Pharisees, how they know the way to go, but they don't go, but they don't let people go. That's what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. Yeah, bear with me. Because in this last hour, you got to make sure you're careful who you learn from and be careful what you believe. Test the spirit to see whether it's of God. You will always know a tree by its fruit, not by what color clothing they have on, not by whether I'm in a car preaching or if I'm in this room preaching or if I'm in a conference ballroom preaching. You will know a tree by its fruit. Okay? It's time for you to mature. It's time for you to stop judging things unrighteously. You can't judge things with an unclean mind. No, no, y'all need to bear with me. This, this is important. I need, I need to tell you this. It's very grieving. Could you imagine someone who I honor, let's say David Wilkerson, a mighty man of God, who while on this earth, he wasn't perfect, but he really loved the Lord. Can you imagine this man is preaching a word about Christ? He's got tears in his eyes, but he happened to wear, let's say, a suit that had black and red in it or something. There are people that would literally focus on the colors of his outfit and say, huh, that's weird. I wonder why he got blue on. Maybe he's a crip. Why he got red on? Is he a blood from LA? You see how stupid that is? You have to match it with the character. You have to match it with the fruit. Now, if somebody is evil and they're putting up the devil horns, then it's quite clear the fruit is evident where they stand. But if 
Derek Prince was preaching a message and he's moving his hands around and happens to just bend his fingers a little bit and someone pauses it and tries to accuse the man of putting up devil horns. Do you think the Lord is not going to judge people like that? That accuse? That falsely? That judge unrighteously? Y'all better be careful, I'm telling you, man. You better start getting discernment so you will know who a true servant of God is and who's a soothsayer, who's a smooth talker, who's just always talking with a soft voice, trying to rock you to sleep so they can breastfeed you to bed. You better watch out, brothers and sisters. Let's get back to this meaty message because you need to grow your teeth and get off that nipple and unsubscribe to that fake YouTube channel and come on here and eat the word of God. Hallelujah. So, okay, let's move forward. So I had to stop and warn you that most of you are subscribed to way too many so-called YouTube teachers. Most of them are not anointed and they're not called to teach you. They're just surface motivational speakers. They scratch the surface of what the Bible says, but they don't, they're not mature enough to lead and run a ministry. And that's nothing to brag about, brothers and sisters. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Did you know the Bible says there shouldn't be too many teachers? Do you know the accountability? Do you know what happens on the day of judgment for those who were deceiving people as teachers? False doctrines and Rocking people to sleep instead of telling them to fear God, instead of telling them to repent, instead of taking the time with prayer and fasting and seeking God so they can bring what they find out about Christ to the people, they're lazy. So they want to give you milk, motivational 20 minute messages and think that's what shepherding means on YouTube. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you got to bear with me. It's grieving because God put it in me and people have testified this servant of God. You have the heart of a shepherd. And I really took that to heart. And I said, Lord, thank you for giving me the heart of a shepherd. Thank you. But having the heart of a shepherd is grieving when you see so many false shepherds, evil shepherds, lying shepherds false teachers and there are thousands of them brothers and sisters thousands of them all i'm telling you to do is truly understand what it means to know a tree by its fruit get to know christ so you can see if christ is in other people or they're just sweet talking you i may be bold at times but i mean it with love and i don't know about you but i don't like creepy relationships where the person is too nice have you ever met nah now nah, we're gonna talk about this have you ever met have you ever met somebody that's too nice like creepy nice jesus wasn't too nice jesus gave love and even when he rebuked he was still doing it in love he would tell people what they needed to hear, not what they wanted to hear. And he didn't care about their feelings in that moment because his concern was them hearing the truth, hoping they will repent and make it to heaven. You understand? So there may be times where you might feel offended when I'm being bold, huh? When I'm telling you to put the sin down, when I'm telling you to stop being fake, when I'm telling you to repent. But ask yourself the question, why am I doing it? Is it because I'm trying to hurt your feelings or am I just being honest? Paul said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? There I go again. Don't worry, you're about to watch this message, okay? But this has to be talked about. One of the most powerful revelations that God has ever given me is in Revelation. I want you to go to Revelation. Hallelujah. Chapter one. I want you to hear this. Now, this is the description of Jesus Christ. Verse 12 going down. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me and being turned, I saw 
seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and a girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool. Hmm, very interesting. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Wow. Do you understand? White as wool because he is the wisdom of God. I really don't want to get into that. We got a message called the wisdom of God. I hope you've seen it already. But eyes of fire because he is the judge. And think of the eternal wrath of God in the very eyes of Christ. How terrifying would that be? Do you think it was like literal flames flickering out of? The, the sockets of Jesus Christ? Or do you believe that it was more than that? Yes, he is a consuming fire, of course. But that fire is the king of glory, the dreadful God Almighty preparing to judge. The righteous judge. Come on, talk to me. Ready to destroy all the enemies of the Almighty. Huh? Wow. Wow absolutely terrifying but listen to this in his feet like unto brass is if they burned as if they burned in a furnace in his voice as the sound of many waters could you imagine the power of his voice why brass why did it mention brass well if you know when the word of God talks about in the days of Moses when the people were bit they would have to look up. Uh, we're not going to go there. See, y'all trying to get another message out of this. Hold on. Let's stick to this. That's a whole nother message. But a voice like many waters. Whoo. Imagine the power. The ground trembled when he spoke. Would you be chilling trying to shake his hand? Or would you drop dead because of the fear of standing before the almighty God? I know I would drop dead. As a dead man before him. Wow. Listen to this. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance. I want you to hear this now. Was as the sun that shines in his strength. Could you imagine this? Now getting into the right hand. That's interesting, isn't it? But his countenance alone, so you're seeing eyes of fire, hair like wool, voice like many waters. The countenance was brighter than the sun that shines in its strength. Who is this? Let's find out. Now, hold on now. Listen. In verse 17. And when I saw him, I reached my hand out and said, hi, nice to meet you. No, that's not what he did, brothers and sisters. Let's read it together. I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. So hold on a minute. This is the Son of God saying, I am the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega. But according to the very scriptures, that can only be for the Almighty God himself. Watch this, brothers and sisters. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. Wait a minute. Did you catch that? Now, this is the very same John that was walking with Jesus Christ for the time he was doing ministry on the earth. This is... John, the disciple in whom Jesus loved, that even makes it even more terrifying. This is the disciple that was closest to Christ who would lean on his bosom, seeing Jesus and was just fell as a fell as a dead man. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing the voice of God in me? This is so strong. But if you go back, look at what it says in chapter one, verse eight again. Jesus Christ speaking, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which, which is and which was and which is to come, 
the Almighty. There is no debate. That's the thing. There is no denying it. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is God Almighty. How many Almighties do you think there are? <laughs> if somebody's in a room and they say, I'm the strongest man here. And another guy says, well, I'm the strongest man here. And another guy says, I'm the strongest man here. There can only be one strongest. There can only be one almighty. No, we're not going to get into that. We got other messages. I hope you've watched. Remember one thing, brothers and sisters. Our main calling in this ministry, glory to God, is to give you the revelations of Christ. What do I mean by that? To learn who he is. Exposing the devil, yes, that's part of ministry. But this is the most important, to know him. You better know him. And he better know you because on that day, you don't want to hear the words, I never knew you. And this is why we labor. This is why we make sacrifices of time and spending hours and all of these things. Not so you can pat us on the back and tell us how good we are. Only good is God. We only care that you make it in. Even if you don't like us, even if you hate us, we love you. And if you have a chance to be saved, our prayer is that you get saved and make it in. That's it. You can apologize at the marriage supper of the Lamb. When you find out we truly were and are the messengers of Christ, the servants of the living God. Do not let appearance, do not judge by appearance, brothers and sisters. Even Samuel misjudged David by his appearance. Anyways, we got to get to the message. So I want to show you why we went over this scripture. When I was meditating on the scripture we read earlier, if you remember in John, it said, perfect love cast away fear. Did you hear that? And we've already established that Jesus Christ is love itself. Remember, God is love, the Bible says, and Jesus Christ is God. Not a God, kind of God. He's God Almighty. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. There is one God. Hallelujah. Perfect love cast away fear. When John seen Jesus Christ in the fullness of his glory as the Almighty, he fell as a dead man, absolutely terrified. But as soon as Jesus Christ put his hands on him, he casted away fear. Do you see it? Perfect love, Jesus Christ, seen John fall as a dead man and said, do not be afraid, it is I. And he casted away the fear. Isn't that beautiful? So when you read in John where it says perfect love cast away fear. Oh, I just caused something. He was actually speaking prophetically for himself. Because John who wrote that letter is the same John who falls as a dead man. Oh, that's so good. He fell as a dead man in the book of Revelation. And perfect love appeared to him. And when he fell because of the dread of the Lord. Perfect love casted away the fear and said, fear not. His very scripture was fulfilled. <laughs> That's so good. But brothers and sisters, now some of you might be scratching your head going, well, hold on a minute. So you're telling me that God wants me to be afraid of him just so he could say, don't be afraid of him. Brothers and sisters, come on. Get off the milk, unsubscribe to at least half those channels that are not warning you about the mark. They're not standing against the Antichrist and they keep you sedated on an IV of milk. Unsubscribe from them, period. Brothers and sisters, you need to get strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And make sure you pray for them and warn them of their lazy teachings. Did you hear what I said? Perfect love casted away fear. Let me give you an example because I will say that could be a legitimate question. Think of if you were a father or a mother, but let's just hypoth hypothetically, let's stick to the role of a father for the sake of God the Father. Let's say the child 
is disobedient all day long, has been giving his mother, her mother, a, a problem all day long. And the mother goes, when, when, when father gets home, he's going to discipline you because you've been a very bad child today. Now, the child knows around six, around seven o'clock, the car pulls into the garage. That's the father. As soon as seven o'clock is coming around the corner, that, that child is going to have a natural, a natural concern because they understand the respect for their father that they're going to get disciplined in a godly way. And when that garage door opens up, they go running and hide, right? Now let's say the father enters in the house, the wife greets him and kind of gives him a quick pep talk. Your son, your daughter has been very bad today. And let's say the child is six years old, seven years old. We'll call it seven. And the father is merciful, you know. We're not talking psychotic abuse of parents. We're talking a merciful father and mother. But they also have to maintain principles in the home and obey the scriptures. So the father looks for the child. He knows where the child is already because he knows where the child hides. So the father goes to the room where the child has gone to and he opens the door and immediately the child is afraid. Not in some like way where the father is an abusive man, but the child knows he or she has been wrong. And now at the presence of their father, they're starting to realize their sin. They're starting to realize how they treated their mother was wrong at seven years old, okay? I'm trying to give you a good analogy, okay? All praises be to the Most High. The father, seeing his child quickly remorseful and seeing the reverence that child has for their father, not the fear that you would give God, but a... a a different type of reverence. I think y'all know what I mean. And the child says, I'm so sorry, dad. I'm, I'm so sorry, father. I'm so sorry the way I behave. Like I, the father will give compassion because that's what he wanted. In other words, the father will say, I want to love you. And in order for me to embrace you, I must first see that you respect me and you respect your mother. Oh, that's so good. Are you catching this? So the father now sees his child respects him and respects his wife, the mother. Now he can say, come here, come here, come here. Look, I love you. Don't disrespect your mother again. Because you've shown me respect and reverence. Because you've shown me respect. I hope that helped you to understand that. God wants us to fear him. That opens the doorway for him to love you. Oh, that's so good. No, God loves you regardless for God so loved the world. But that's not what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. I'm talking about when you fear God, you create the doorway for him to walk through. Ooh. Listen, let me say it again. When you fear God. You create the doorway for him to enter your room and embrace you, even though you deserve a whooping. Oh, that's so good. And it's dangerous when you fear creation. It's dangerous when you fear the dragon. It's dangerous when you fear anything other than God Almighty. Because the only fear that is allowed is the fear of the Lord. It cannot be compared to Human fear, fear of creation, anxiety, and I'm afraid of tsunamis, I'm afraid of weather, I'm, I'm afraid of the Illuminati, I, I'm afraid of diseases, I'm afraid of criminals, I'm afraid of evil people and violence. And Fear not, brothers and sisters, 365 days a year, fear not. Stop being afraid. Wow. We're about ready for the message. This message changed my life. There may be some of you who have already seen it. Please watch it again. It's called the most ancient form of worship. This mystery 
I'm telling you right now, if you follow Christ and obey him, if you focus and actually watch this message, your life will never be the same. You're going to have a whole new level of love and respect and fear for the Lord. And you're going to be empowered to not be afraid of the enemy. Brothers and sisters, we have to continue as God allows us to expose Satan, to expose the Antichrist agenda, and to expose the many different branches within his agenda. Many different topics and things that we must, in fact, we're commanded to expose the devil. But it would only be right and only be mature and loving that we would stop and give you this video in between. So that way, as you watch these documentaries, can you handle this truth? The world is a stage part four. The second half to part four, which may be called part five, just so people don't get confused. Lord willing will be released hopefully sooner than later. Please keep us in prayer. But as you're watching these documentaries, I want to plead with you not to be afraid. Yes, the truth is, the truth is terrifying. Yes, fear God. But while you're watching these documentaries about the Antichrist agenda and how, they're, how the dragon is circling the, is circling the earth like a python, slowly trying to cave the walls in around the children of God, stop being afraid. You hear me? Stop being afraid. Do not fear those that can kill your body. Fear the one who has the decision on where you will go for eternity. So this is our healthy balance because Christ loves you so much and we love you. Please stop being afraid. I'll say it meek because earlier I said it bold. Stop being afraid. You have to be able to watch these very important documentaries where the things that get revealed that are absolutely a fact and the evidence is right before your very eyes. You have to know about it, but not at the expense of you living a life of absolute fear. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. It's interesting because the scripture I just said, be anxious for nothing. That word literally means be careful for nothing. It literally means anxious. It's that word anxiety. But it means to be troubled with the cares. Do you not remember in Mark chapter 4 verse 19 when the Lord talks about the cares of this world has choked out the seed? Stop being afraid. The news, social media is designed to constantly play with your emotions. Terror level threat five today. Oh, new variant. And all of these things is designed to make you afraid of everything and anything but the Most High God. The true fear of the Lord is not the same thing as that evil spirit of fear that you cannot fall victim to anymore. Because in the book of Romans, it talks about fear is like a slave master. Did you know that? Read Romans chapter 8, 15. I want to get into it because I'm trying to get you to this video that was released quite a few years back and it's more prophetic now than ever. But fear is a slave master to shackle you, to try to consume your mind. To, that's all you think about all day. I'm afraid of the dragon. I'm afraid of the devil. I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Think of when you were a child, how much they try to indoctrinate you. Nickelodeon. Are you afraid of the dark and afraid of the monster under the bed and all of this garbage? Stop being afraid. Allow the blood of the lamb to wash your mind, body, soul, and spirit. You will have so much victory because when you're not afraid, your mind is sound. It's calm. You're able to think clear. Am I talking to you or not? Are you, talk are you talking to me though? Are we having a conversation or are you behind the bushes trying to find something you could talk about with me? How is your heart? Are you receiving this message? Because on the day of judgment, I'm getting in with my family by the grace of God. And God is going to see the fruit that was produced because of him. That my heart, my hope, and my passion was to give you a message to help you. But what was your heart when you received it?
Wow. This is what we're going to end with. Two things. Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that he was fully persuaded. That means fully convinced that there was nothing that could separate him from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. No height, no depth, no sword, no peril, no nothing, no nothing, no nothing. That's where we have to be. To be fully persuaded that anything that does happen is allowed to happen. And if God is allowing it to happen, he still has everything under control. That he will get me out of the storm. Oh, I can't do it. Y'all, please bear with me. I'm not ready to send you to the video yet. Please bear with me. Imagine when Paul, when he was on the ship in the book of Acts, and it literally crashed. There was a storm called your, your rock Ladon. I got a message about it that God gave. Life-changing message. Glory, All glory to Christ. Without him, I'm nothing. But I could do all things through him. Amen. And so can't you. But imagine what it was like on that ship when it crashed and Paul was holding on to a piece of wood floating. Do you think he was, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, or do you think by that time Paul understood the mystery? God knows exactly where I'm at. He knows I'm in this ocean. He knows I'm holding on to this piece of wood. <laughs> he, he knows I'm holding on. Right? He's got me. If he wants to call me home, I'll probably drown right here. But if he don't want me to die, there's nothing the enemy can do to kill me. I thought it, we made it clear that they tried to kill John in the book of Revelation, but couldn't succeed. They had to leave him on an island. It's that simple, brothers and sisters. That's the beauty of this mystery. When you have that understanding, when you have this mystery, that anything that is allowed to happen to you, is allowed by God. The one thing you have to be concerned about is are you pleasing him? Are you obeying him? Are you serving him? Are you obeying his commands? What he tells you to do, do you do it? Are you abstaining from sin? Are you honoring him? Because when you do that and believe he is the almighty, the son of God who died for you, Receive his grace, but also walk in holiness. Guess what? He will never leave you nor forsake you. If Christ before you, who could be against you? But if a person is living in sin, if they're living in rebellion and they're of the world, yeah, they better be concerned because a lot of things will happen to them that happened to them because of their evil ways. They opened up doors of destruction. Are you understanding? So live for the Lord. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow him. He loves you so much. So finally, before you go to that message called the most ancient form of worship, I needed to finish this message called Gripped by Fear. I want you to remember, I want you to go to Revelation with me. Chapter 21. Look at what it says. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Did you hear that? But wait a minute. Did you catch the fact that the first two categories of people that are cast into the lake of fire first are the fearful and the unbelieving? Did you catch that? That's how much God hates when we fear creation, no matter what it is, from the dragon to the wagon. He hates it when we fear anything other than him to the point where it's the first group that he says, get them out of my sight. Whew. The next is the unbelieving because listen, when people fear creation, they're stripped of their belief for the creator. Oh, that's so deep, Lord. I got to go, y'all. I, I got to go. I got to go. Listen, consider that. And what would be the odds that the third is the abominable? And I want you to think about what the Antichrist uses as his number one weapon, weapons to cause people to receive the mark. Fear and unbelief. Yes or no? Did they not induce fear on the world? Oh, you better take that. 
Well, you're going to die. You better take that or you can't get on a plane. You better take that or everybody on your job is going to look at you as the crazy one. You better take that. You're not going to be able to work. You better take that. They use fear as the weapon to cause people to take the abomination. That's why it's the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable. There's actually a hidden message within the order of those cast into the lake of fire. I'll have to maybe talk about it in the world is a stage part four, which more than likely will be called part five. Okay, so brothers and sisters, get ready. Have your notepad, have your pen, have your word, and have a passion to want to eat meat instead of being on some of these YouTubers nipple, drinking milk, ready to eat meat and get off that milk. Okay, brothers and sisters, and learn about the most ancient form of worship. We love you all so much. Please pray for us as we pray for you. We wanted to take this time because we got a lot of documentaries by God's grace that we want to give you while we're able to still reach you. So you need to know about this. You need to know about Christ. So that way you can balance it out. And when you learn, so that way when you watch documentaries that expose the devil, you're not afraid. You're just equipped with the knowledge to understand and know what's really going on. But your hope and trust is peacefully in Christ. Perfect love. Because perfect love cast out all fear. Come on, say it with me. All fear that is of the enemy. I call upon Jesus Christ. My perfect love to cast you away. You are not welcome in this house. Jesus Christ is the Lord of this house. And Lord, forgive me for ever fearing anything other than the Creator. In Jesus Christ's name, Yeshua the Almighty, we love you so much. Enjoy this message. In Jesus Christ's name, stop being afraid. Stop being afraid. So let's get back to it. The most ancient form of worship is the fear of God. I'm telling you straight up. You ready for it? The fear of the Lord is not just in the Old Testament. It's saturated through the New Testament. Saturated. It's coming. Right? Hallelujah. There's no greater place to be than terrified of Jesus. Can't do this right now, Lord. There's no greater place to be than terrified of Jesus Christ. When you tremble before him, he can show you anything. When you tremble before him, you can speak in any tongue. When you tremble, you can prophesy. When you tremble, you can raise the dead. When you tremble. Listen to this. Write them down. We're not going to go through all of them. Proverbs 1 verse 7. Ready? Proverbs 8 verse 3. Proverbs 14, 27. And 26. Proverbs 3 verse 7. And Proverbs 19, 23. Clearly we're not going over all these. We're going to be here till 12. Uh, 19, 23. We going to read Proverbs 1 verse 7. No, what is it? Well, someone go to it quickly. What does it say? First one there, just raise your hand, bang it out. Go ahead. Verse 7? Yep. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The fools despise wisdom and instruction. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What is knowledge? Is anything that you will know. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the Bible says. To fear the Lord is wisdom, and to leave evil is understanding. Somebody go to Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and read it quickly. Hallelujah. Whoever's there, raise your hand. It's like a block away. What's your problem? Go ahead now. 
Listen to the servant of God. Fear God and keep his commandments. No, I'm sorry. Run it back. A little louder. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Out of the entire book of Ecclesiastes, he says, listen, if there's one thing you can remember, fear God. What is this mystery? What is this? That's Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Write down Job 28, 28. Okay? Write down Psalms 33, 8. Write down Psalms 111, verse 10. Write down Psalms 25, 14. Write down Psalms 86, 11. Psalms 34, 9. And we're going to read Psalms 103, 17. Somebody go there. We're going to get into it. Trust me. I love where your mind is going. Somebody read it. 103.17. But the steadfast love of the Lord is the everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him and His righteousness to children's children. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say it again, Andy. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him and his righteousness to children's children. Wait a minute. The love of the Lord is to those who fear him. Write that down. And although, oh, by the way, I, I do need to mention that this also liberates you from any other fear. How you like that? How you like that? Glory to Christ. I find it interesting in the book of Revelation I don't need to give you this you better know this John is face to face with the son of the most high God right it's interesting that John was the one who leaned on Jesus you gotta be really close to someone of them brother you feel me you got me my bro bro to be like just leaned up all on me like Especially in Atlanta. People might get the wrong impression. Just get off me, dog. You got these men checking me out now. Right? There was a connection. Do you know that John, it always mentioned John, it would be the disciple in whom he loved. There was a certain love that Jesus had for John. Would you agree they was, they was tight? What happened in the book of Revelation? Here it is. Jesus appears. To, are they going to the bathroom though? I just don't want them caught drawing attention and distracting in their bathroom. Okay, cool. So, Jesus appears to John. What did it say happened to Jesus? He had fire in his eyes. And well, what did John do when he seen Jesus? Jump. Say it again. Fell as a dead man. Say it again. Fell as a dead man. Let me ask you a question. How could John fall as a dead man to his friend? Listen, John was in one of the most beautiful places ever. He was in the perfect holiness of the most ancient form of worship. He was utterly terrified of Jesus Christ. Utterly. And what did Jesus say after that? You, you better fear me. He didn't say that. He said, fear not. This is what it is with Christ. Listen to this carefully. He wants you to tremble before him. Then he will let you in. Because now he knows he can. So this whole mystery. I'm going to give you scriptures. We got to be quick. Deuteronomy 10, 12. Write that down. Now, 
These are New Testament scriptures. Write these down. Philippians 2, 12 to 13. Write that down. Philippians 2, 12 to 13. Write that down. 2 Corinthians 5, 11. Write that down. 2 Corinthians You writing this down? 5.11 I'm going to read this real quick Knowing therefore Listen to this carefully now Y'all ready for it? It's the last message for tonight So let's get this in What does it say in verse 11? Just pause right there. That's all I wanted to hear. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. What does it mean to try to persuade men? B. Imagine your cousin is a black belt and a professional boxer on the low. Like you've seen him brutalize the faces of men. And you got a friend. Right? And your friend, he's, he's, he's cocky. And he's like, yo, dog, your cousin, dog, he's he looking at me funny. And you're warning him. You're like, bro, I'm trying to persuade you. I, leave the man alone. Like, he's going to break your face. It's not worth it. Now get off of me. Just, you, bang. Right? That ain't even comparison to how these men of God and women of God would try to persuade people to fear God because they knew the terror of the Lord. Let me tell you something. The most terrifying place to be is when the revelation of sin hits you. Did you hear what I just said? When the revelation of your sinful life really is revealed to you and you tremble knowing that God is not happy with you. That's terrifying. If you want to maybe, um, I don't know, give them some candy or something. Yeah. Yeah, give them a candy. Here, have that candy. Keep, have the candy. Go ahead. Now listen, get back to this. We got to finish this. When you read scriptures... Where it's God talking to his enemies. One of the most terrifying scriptures I ever read. Was when God said. If that man does not turn from their evil ways. Let it be known that I will bend my bow. And I will wet my sword. My God. There's nobody that can save you. There's nobody that can help you. All God got to do is go. And anything can happen. I'll never forget the testimony real quick. A man tried to disrespect the Lord. He was mad at God because nothing was going right. The one in the wheelchair. Spanish brother in a wheelchair gave a testimony. He said to God, you know, you know what, Lord, you don't forget you. You know, the devil's just, he's more powerful than you. The next day he was helping a buddy carry wood. He was carrying wood. And the wood hit him in the back of the neck. And ruptured something. And caused some, He was paralyzed. In a hospital bed for six months. Do you know the Lord spoke to him. And said. Now what do you think of me? Listen. This is God. We kind of forget sometimes. We're talking to a person. A person has feelings. A person has... What, what's the word I'm looking for? They have their own likes and dislikes. A person has anger, sadness, gladness, these things. Now God gave him back his feet. But how scary is it for the person... Who lives sinful. Goes to church. 
and doesn't even realize they're an enemy of Christ. Doesn't even realize he can't stand them. They're just, I worship you, Lord. On Sunday, fornicating on Monday. God wants nothing to do with your raised hands. He don't want to hear your songs. He is getting ready to remove you off the earth. And you didn't even know it. To me, that is the most terrifying thing. It's for a man to not even realize he's been an enemy of Christ. Now listen to this. Knowing the terror of God. Do you know what that means in the original Greek? I looked it up in the lexicon and all that. Do you know what the word terror means? It means terror. <laughs> Sometimes you don't need the Greek. I'm kind of scared actually to read the Greek. Because it's probably a more scary word. What is terror? Terror is like stepping outside in the morning. Oh, and an F5 tornado is like a football field away. Coming on. That's, that's crazy. Think about that. What do you do? Oh, oh, uh, hard. I'm being real. That's terrifying. But it ain't nothing like God. Who, that's like a finger. If all tornadoes, the finger of God, which ain't necessarily true, but you know what I'm saying. Let's go through the scriptures. We got to wrap this up. Matthew 10, 28. Write it down. Luke 18, 2. Romans chapter 3, verse 18. I'm going to read it. In Jesus Christ's name. There is no fear of God before their eyes. This is why they're sinning. Remind you, this is following after chapter 2. And chapter 1. Sodomy and lying and idolatry. Idolization is a massive killer. People are idolized Doritos. No, I'm for real. They don't... This, not having a fear of God is the worst thing. It means you don't know how to worship God. So we're going to get into it tonight. We're going to wrap this up. Revelation 15.4. Revelation 14.7. Write them down. 1 Peter 2.17 and 1.17. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 2 and 10.22. Also, Acts 13, 16. Anybody who ain't talk, taking notes, I feel sorry for you. Unless you, ha you have no choice. If you got a baby in your hand or something, you should be taking notes. Who comes to a class and doesn't take notes? Huh? What are we at? Acts 13, 16. Acts 13, 26. And Acts 9, 31. Do you know at times when Paul the Apostle would strike down and blind a man or certain things when Ananias and Sapphira, remember that, the Holy Ghost, you lied to the Holy Ghost, struck him dead. But guess what? That was one of the greatest things that happened in the book of Acts. Let me tell you verbatim right now. I kid you not. Let's say we had a man in this meeting named... Uh, Rico Johnson. If there's really Rico Johnson, Lord, save him. But let's just hypothetically say, right? And he stood up and lied. And I said to him, you have not lied to me. You have lied to the Holy Ghost. And now the Lord has come for you. If he dropped down to right there, I'm telling you, every single one of your lives would change for the good. Amen. You hear me? It would change for the good. Take him away. Where's his wife? It's what we need. What kind of man of God prays that way? Lord, bring Ananias and Sapphira back. So everybody will fear. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when you see them dead, you want to be lying to me next time you talk to me. 
when that false prophet came around and tried to distract the Paul from preaching and you seen that man go blind you be like Paul gets on my nerves but I'm gonna respect that man he be nah he began loud with me he tried to dis he tried to yell at me at times but that's a man of God I'm not playing with him because I know Jesus is with him this is what really did it it wasn't the miracle that you would think it would be the miracles. It was not the miracles like you think it was. It was the fear of God that spread the gospel. Listen. Listen. Fear of the Lord is what we're talking about, right? Listen to this. Ephesians 6, 5. Write that down. Ephesians 6, 5 and Philippians 2, 12. Write that down. Ephesians 6 5, Philippians 2 12. Yeah, I'm just repeating it for him. Now listen to 6 5 of Ephesians. Servants. Hold on. You know what? Let me go to another one. I want to go to Philippians. Go to Philippians 2 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Where do you hear about these type of messages nowadays? Everybody's just awesome. Like the Lego movie. Everybody's always in the joy of the Lord. Always? To me, that's unnatural. I don't mean the, the, the spiritual joy of the Lord. I mean they're always happy. They, all, they just think they're perfect with God. They got nothing to worry about. You better make sure and double check your life, sir. Right. Listen to this. Colossians 3.22. Write that down. Hebrews 4.1. Listen to what it says. Let us therefore fear. Lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Let us fear. This is New Testament brothers and sisters. We are not in Deuteronomy. Write Hosea 11.10. And Daniel 6.26. We're about to get into the, the meat of this message right now. Y'all ready? I say y'all ready? In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. What is the definition of fear? The unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous. Follow along. How many times did Jesus Christ command the people, do not fear? How many times? Good to see you, sis. We love you very much. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. How many times did he tell the disciples? Do you know, do you know, what, what's, in all honesty, what's really missing in, in the Bible? Exclamation points, apostrophe, certain symbols that tell you how the word was spoken. Yes. We actually lose a lot because of that. Because in our imagination... Jesus was always, don't fear. You know how many exclamation points you would see? But stop being afraid. Stop. Because there's a certain power that comes with that. That's why if you want to know where somebody is spiritually, if you can't raise your voice to them under the power of God, they're very broke down emotionally and effeminate. That's crazy. Women, do you know you do a disservice in your marriage if you don't allow your husband to roar like a lion? Oh, that was heavy, Lord. If you get offended every time your husband raises his... I'm not talking about he's got an ungodly anger, he's just being mean and rude. But if you get offended every time your husband roars like a lion, you are stepping in the way of what he is supposed to do naturally. You need that in your life sometimes. You need your husband to roar at you. 
because that will actually draw you closer to him in attraction if you're a woman of God. Because when you try to transform your man to be a woman part two, <laughs> I remember a guy said one time, he was like, I ask women all the time to describe their perfect man and they always describe another woman. <laughs> There's a reason we're different. Now, men, we got to be humble and meek and kind and gentle and loving to our wives. Be kind to your wives. I'm not talking about let your man be abusive. If you do something out of line, if he comes at you boldly, don't be quick to resist it. Because it might do something inside of you that it's meant to do. Do you follow? Now listen to this. We're talking about this, how Jesus yelled at the disciples a lot. That's why I brought that up. He said, stop being afraid. Because when you speak, okay, you blow the trumpet. You blow the trumpet. Tomorrow you're going to do it again, Lord willing. Right? Push them storm clouds away again in Jesus' name. Right? Lord willing. Right? You don't go, huh. You would be fired immediately. Just look, we love you in the ministry. You can stay, but so far I've got to be outside the building. Right? What does it take? <laughs> it takes force. It takes power. Come on, this is deep. When they circled the walls of Jericho, they were like, hey, yay. Yeah. Yeah. They yelled with authority. And power. Right? There's something with that. But Jesus kept saying don't fear. Right? Because you know very well. One of the greatest principalities is what? Fear. It's the principality of fear. Write that down. Principality of fear. In fact I believe. That the principality of fear. Is the very top principality. We're wrapping this up. We're about to get into prayer. Liberation. The principality of what? Fear. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. But power, love, and a sound mind. In Jesus' name. Now, what does the letter of John say? What does perfect love do? What is the opposite of fear? What is the opposite of love? I call somebody, I'm like, you. <laughs> your eyes crossed, you're like, yes. smoke came out. You're about to say, hey, keep it real. The opposite of love is fear. You ready for it? Go to Psalms 103. And read verse 17 again. Whoever gets there first, because we got to roll. Psalms, we already read it earlier. 103, verse 17. That's not a King James, is it? It is? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So, cause let me read out of mine just so I can see it myself. I believe you. I just want to re-examine it. Oh, yeah. We're going to get into that. Generational. Are right, you ready? Listen to what it says. I'm going to read it again. Listen. Psalms 103, 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that what? Fear them. Here it is. So let's bring it all together. Why is fear the most ancient form 
of worship. Do you want to know why? Man. Go to Revelation 21.8. Revelation 21.8. Somebody read it nice and loud. Why is it a fearful person is sent first before a pedophile? It doesn't make any sense at all. Pedophile needs to go. You know what I'm saying? If they don't repent, they need to go. The most disgusting creatures on the earth is to harm a little one. Jesus said it's better you wasn't even born than to harm one of these little ones. But yet, although they do go to hell if they don't repent, why is it, listen, why is it the Almighty looks at a whole lineup of wickedness and says, mm, that one I hate the most, go. Lead the pack. You want to know the revelation? What if I told you, let nothing distract you. What if I told you that the fear of the Lord proves wait a minute y'all see that in the corner of the room near the chair look at the bear I eight feet tall I'm stop laughing look at it do y'all see the bear fam watch out Mike move let me ask y'all a question why was Mike not afraid God, this is so good. Why wasn't Mike not afraid of the bear? Because he knows it don't exist. Did you catch it? You don't fear something you know don't exist. But if it was a real bear, brother Mike, Flipping tables, throwing chairs, and hitting the door. You ain't got a rock and a sling. Don't be brave up in here. Did you catch that though? I said there was a bear, but you knew there was no bear. So you had nothing. You didn't even flinch. Some of y'all cracked a, a, a little funny laugh. Most people don't fear God because deep down they don't believe he exists. Let me explain something to you. You were only created to worship God and fear Him because when you tre listen to me, listen to me. In Jesus' name, I plead with your soul. This is why you came here. When you tremble before God, it is the greatest proof and evidence that you worship Him. And believe he's real. Because you are confident and straight up convinced that he's real. And that he's alive. And that he's so powerful. You tremble before him. That is bananas. Who could handle a word like this? The most ancient form of worship is fearing God. This is why Jesus kept telling us, don't be afraid of the police. Don't be afraid of wars. Don't be afraid of the dark. Don't be afraid of traveling distances. Don't be afraid of the abuse of husband. Don't be afraid. Because what you fear, you're worshiping. Did you just hear me? If you fear it, you worship. Write it down. What you fear, you worship. By default. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. By default. Because the fear of God was only supposed to be for the Almighty. If you give fear to something else, 
You make that a God. Lord have mercy. This is why the fearful are the first ones cast. Because fear is only reserved for the almighty. It is the untalked about form of worship. It's the way you approach him. You understand what I'm saying to you? Listen to me. Imagine being one of the people with Moses. And you just got done seeing the ground open up. 3,000 people fall in and the ground shuts and you're chilling going. Okay, I'm, not, no, I'm definitely not playing with him. The gods of Egypt, no, nah, I didn't have no problem with them. I could fornicate, do whatever I want because they were fake. But this God right here, he does not play. I, I've witnessed his wrath. I'm telling you right now, this is what I am praying for. Now, unfortunately, some people have to be made an example. That's right. They feared. That's right. That's right. That's right. And Jonah was terrified. This is why we need the fear of the Lord. Because it's the most ancient form of worship. And this is what you get when you fear God. You will get the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that you are all desperately seeking for. See the reason why these wolves in sheep's clothing have so many conferences and make so much money. Is because they're giving you knowledge and wisdom but keeping out the fear. They'll tell you about Illuminati. They'll do conferences on the New World Order. They'll do conferences on uh, how to be rich. They'll do all these conferences. But they leave out the one thing that is the first thing. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's like a contractor talking about the attic and he ain't even built the basement yet. So this is what we're going to do. Let us pray. Say this, say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I stand here in your presence. I repent of my sins. Lord, I'm from a land of wicked sinners who don't fear you, who don't love you. Please have mercy on me. This is all I've known. To not fear you and fear everything else. Fear, everything else. fear, the, dark. fear the dark. Fear demons. Fear, demons. fear, the, fear the law, police, the, law. the Illuminati, the Illuminati. New, world New world order. Fear death. Fear, death. fear, everything, fear everything but you. But you. I, repent, I repent, Jesus. Lord, Lord. I want you to take all fear out of my heart. I don't want to fear anything anymore except you. You are the only one that I'm supposed to fear because when I fear you, it's my... When I fear you, it's the greatest example of my faith for you because I tremble before you because I believe you are real and you are not playing with people. Lord, Lord, I'm sorry I have to ask. Sorry, I, have to ask. I should already have it. Already but for, you, for the sake of Jesus Christ, the of Jesus Christ give, me the fear of God. give me the fear of God. Make me tremble before you. Me you. All, other fear. All other fear. Take it out of my soul. Take it out of my, soul. Take it out of my spirit. Take it out of my, spirit. My, mind. my mind. Wherever it could be. Come out, of me. come out of me. Now start calling on every fear you know you struggle with. Command it to come out now. All fear. Fear of the dark. Fear of being uh, laughed at. Fear of being left alone. Fear of dying. Fear of being abused. All fear. Command it to come out right now. Say, I reject the fear of the police. I reject the fear of dying. 
I reject the fear of the dark. I reject the fear of being laughed at. I reject the fear of losing my loved ones. I reject the fear of being homeless. Whatever your fears are, it's not your fears. Get it out of you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now. Only thing that should remain in you is the fear of the Most High God. Say, God did not give me the spirit of fear. But power, love, and a sound mind. Lord, fill me with perfect love. That cast away all fear. In the name of Jesus Christ. I shall not fear. I shall not fear. I shall not worship anything else. I refuse to give my worship to the devil, to the Illuminati, to the New World Order, to witchcraft, to curses, to pain. I refuse. Lord, be with me. I want to fear you because I know when I fear you, it's the key to get in. It's the key to get in. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Listen. Everybody that heard this word right now. I release an anointing on everybody that loves Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands. Wherever you are, lift up your hands. I release an anointing as a servant of the Most High God. To those who love Jesus Christ, this is the anointing. That this word will burrow deep down into your inner man. And every time some fear tries to rise up. Every time the devil tries to get you to be afraid of something. This word will rise up in defense of Christ. And you will remember, I will not be afraid. Because if I fear that thing, or that person, or that place, I will be worshipping it. And if I worship it, I have become an idolater. And I am not going to hell for something or someone. Say it now. I, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I stand in your presence, in your presence. Worshiping, you. worshiping you and now I know, now I know. When, I when I fear you it's the greatest way, the greatest I, way. Can I can prove you exist it's the greatest way I can prove that you're my God because my fear is only reserved for you Whenever fear that is not of yours comes around, Lord, rise this word in me that I will remember. It's not just about being afraid. I will be giving worship over and I will refuse to do it with your help, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Even if my body trembles, even if I grow weary, even if it feels like all these things are going on. Keep me from being afraid. Keep me from fearing. I want to love you, Jesus. And only serve you. I want to tremble. Knowing there's a trillion ways you could destroy me. Torture me. Hurt me. Break me. But you choose to love me. I want to know that, Lord. That you're not my homie. You're not my pal. You're my savior. You are terrifying to be before. Help me, Lord, to fall as a dead man before you. Because I want you to put your hand on me and say, don't be afraid. Fear not. It is I. Lord, thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I'm not here to sound pretty. I'm here to speak life to the dead. I shall not fear. I shall not fear. Even when death is near. I 
shall not fear Even though the end of days are here I shall not fear Because I know my Lord Jesus Christ is here He walks inside me He lives inside me He walks beside me He is with me So I shall not fear The new world order I shall not fear A guillotine Oh no I shall not be afraid When I walk through the shadows of death I shall not be afraid When I walk through the valley of death I shall not fear 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 Cause Jesus Christ is here Yeshua is here I shall not fear 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 Cause perfect love is here The Holy Ghost is here in Jesus Christ's name, stop being afraid! Stop being afraid!